What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon. You're back to another preview video. This is going to be the second game for the Lions coming up. Now what we do in these preview videos is we chuck on the teams in the background of the teams they're going to be playing and then over the top we talk about the actual teams that have been announced, some of the thoughts on what's going to happen in the game and basically what we think maybe a score prediction could be or who we think is going to do well or badly. Now I've turned this one into a little bit of a series so of course we have my created Lions team. I did do a video on actually making the team for this game. Um, unfortunately, there is no Emirates Lions in this game because they don't have all the Southern Hemisphere teams in. So I tried to pick the team with the closest badge, uh, which is Gloucester. So we're going to have Gloucester in the background. Uh, so we'll get this game kicked off and underway. Alrighty, here we are at the, well, I was going to say stadium, it's more, <laughs> it's like someone's back park, but here we go, we're down in the corridor. For these videos, as opposed to the other preview videos we're doing for the July Internationals, I like to let these run a little bit longer, uh, get a bit more of an atmosphere to this one, so we're coming out of the tunnel now. I have changed up the team a little bit from the last one we did when it was Lions versus Japan. I thought it'd be really nice because that way we can slowly build up all the different players that are playing in the Lions. They start off with really poor chemistry in the game and the more games you play with them the chemistry builds up so it has changed a bit so this one we've got a few new players in there's a couple of different people in different positions you'll see the chemistry that will have changed from the team to the other team so it's going to be a lot of fun to actually sort of almost have our own Lions series as we're going through here um, and we get to do these for the preview videos but of course we'll talk about normally there's Quentin Prevost there's our boy the only referee in the game <laughs> <laughs> to every every game, but it's always fun to make these last a little bit longer. There is like no one at the stadium. What have we got? Like fifty people watching this game. It's the Lions series. Come on. So Lions uh, versus Lions. This is going to be a fun one to talk through. So Dan Bigger will get us uh, kicked off and underway here. We'll start off kicking to the right. We've got the wind coming against us. Not very useful, but we'll bash it up and see how we get on. So the Lions had their first game versus Japan last week, and I did do the preview video for that, and then of course I did the review immediately after that game had ended. And in all honesty, I thought it was a pretty comprehensive win for the Lions. Um, I was expecting it to be actually a little closer maybe than where it was going to, where it sort of went throughout the game. Um, Japan seemed to get beaten an awful lot. That first five minutes started out and the Lions team sort of just kept giving away possession, almost like testing their own defence, testing what um, Japan were going to do. Oh, Elliot Daly with a lovely little breakthrough there as Owen Farrell. Can he finish that off? Oh, he might get stopped just before the end. Um, so they, the Lions actually played very well in that game. A couple of issues to work on, absolutely. There was a couple of issues with players getting isolated. We saw it with Connor Murray. We saw it with Duane van der Merwe. Um, taking these one-off runs on their own and being turned over penalties given away relatively easily um, which is certainly an issue I am going to be talking to the rugby guru about that we did one for the Japan game we are going to be doing one for this Lions versus Lions game um, and talking and having a little bit more of a breakdown on it so if you want to watch a bit of more of a longer in-depth video feel free to check that out after this video whenever I manage to upload that one um, and some other areas to work on compound errors for the Lions was certainly a thing penalty upon penalty upon penalty um, and then they had that final 10 minutes where they did actually take a player off and they played with 14 men for the final 10 minutes and the defence held up. There was an awful lot of penalties and I think in a normal game a yellow card might have come but they managed to hold out nonetheless. So positives for the Lions, try scoring was good, Duan van der Merwe, Josh Adams... Ty Byrne had a fantastic game. The three of them getting tries on their debut for the Lions. So they've started out strong. So the Lions have now got something to build on and work through here. Leading into this game, they all have some areas to work on. Of course, there will be a team change. Two of the big noticeable missing names that are going to be in this team now is going to be, of course, Alan jones going off in that seventh minute with an injury, a dislocated shoulder. He is now out of the Lions tournament, which is such a shame for him. Been on so many Lions tours as well. Real veteran of the game. And uh, as a Wales supporter myself, I do hope he comes back in time to get back for the Six Nations. But we'll have to wait and see uh, what happens there. And the other noticeable name missing is going to be Justin Tipperick. Of course, out with an injury himself. I believe Jack Conan is all fit and ready to go again. Um, I don't think he will be making a huge impact from the starting 15. Uh, but he will nonetheless be continuing on through this Lions tour. As we see Owen Farrell getting a great little try in there so let's talk about the team officially announced we'll check it on screen for you guys so um oh, this is a bit of a weird order for me there's no great graphics we've just got Stuart Hogg staring you down and that's because Stuart Hogg has taken over that captaincy um I don't think this is a terrible move 
I do believe that Colin Murray has taken over sort of like the tour captaincy, which I'm not 100% sure if I agree with that one. There are other people that play actual, you know, captains in their international sides. Farrell, Hogg, there's a couple of other names in there I might have picked before Colin Murray, but Hogg taking the captaincy for this game in particular. Um, so it'll be nice to see how he gets on there. Uh, we'll start off in the front row like we normally do. It's just a little bit out of order because of uh, how it all scales down here. So Wynne Jones, Jamie George, Kyle Sinclair, of course, a lot of the English contingency weren't in the Japan game, mainly because they a lot of club level games going on which interfered with some of the sports going on at the same time so we'll see a lot more English players here because one they've missed out on a game two they'll be fitter and three they probably trained a little bit behind the scenes while the game was going on as well so uh, Kyle Sinclair coming in there I think he's a great scrummager brought in of course because Andrew Porter went out of the tournament so it'd be nice to see him in there Jamie George got a lot to live up to Ken Owens had a really good game against Japan no real negative faults to say on his part so Jamie George going to be fighting him for that starting hooker position Wynne Jones um, to me actually had a better game than Rory Sutherland I know he played a lot less of that first game but as soon as Wynne Jones came on made a real impact turnover balls running with the ball in hand I don't think we got to see as much from Rory Sutherland as I would have liked to but it'd be nice for him to carry on there uh, moving into the locks again English combos we did talk in the first video about the combos in this team Scrum halves, fly halves, centre partnerships, lock departments here. Maro Toje and Johnny Hill, the partnership that plays together in the England side. I'm sure they'll work very well. That's a strong couple of line-out players there. So line-out should be relatively secure for them. And, you know, big boys in sort of, you know, turnover circles. Maro Toje good on the turnover. And the breakdown area will be very good for them. So feeling confident about that works well for me. Uh, that back row, Courtney Laws, Hamish Watson and Talupe Falatau. That is uh, a variety of players in there. I'm not sure the link-ups that will work too well in here. Nice to see that Hamish Watson back from an injury um, that he did sustain that made him miss out on the uh, Japan game. Courtney Laws actually had a really good game going on very early. Um, in that Japan game, having to make way because I think Justin Tipperick went off, so that's why he came on. I can't remember if he came on for Alan Wynn, actually, thinking back now. Um, but played well, looking forward to seeing him back in that team. That six shirt, he's more than happy to be in. Hamish Watson in the seven. We talk night and day about how much <laughs> how much I like Hamish Watson. I think he's a really good player. And Falatau taking that eight, playing in the correct position this time. Uh, had to play a lot of uh, flanker positions in the Japan game, which uh, did mean he, he didn't really see a lot of Falatau in the last game, but um, I'm sure we'll see a lot more of him in this one. Running lines from eight. Checking out that back line super quickly because somehow we've hit half time in this game. Uh, Ali Price, Finn Russell, the Scottish combo again. Combo's working well for them. I'm sure we'll see that partnership work very well. We know how well they work in that Scottish pack. We see how well Scotland have played this year in the Six Nations. So those two will be leading from the front, no doubt. Josh Adams returns to his left wing as opposed to last week when he was on his right wing. Um, no Van der Merv. Um, interesting call considering that you've got the Scottish um, halfback partnership there. So... Big call there. Josh Adams taking that left wing. Owen Farrell moves into 12 and Chris Harris at 13. So a slightly different setup. We haven't got the Irish partnership of Aki, who played very well. Um, actually, I've, I've, a lot of doubts about Aki going into this tournament. Nice to see him playing well. Um, and also, uh, we're not going to have the other Irish contingency in there as well. So Chris Harris coming in in that outside centre. We'd like to see him. Uh, the defensive work he had in that France game for Scotland was very good. And uh, Owen Farrell in that 12, we know what he offers. So the two playmakers, Farrell and uh, Finn Russell, are going to be playing off of each other quite well. Finn Russell will no doubt be leading from the front, and Owen Farrell will just be the distributor coming out the back. Gives you a left-right combo. Ali Price likes to use distributors a lot like Conor Murray in that way, rather than running with the ball himself. So giving him on either side is going to be very useful for them. Uh, and finally, checking out the uh, the backs there, we've got Louis Rees Zamet going to make his debut on that right wing. So the Welsh partnership in the two wings can work quite well for them. And finally, Stuart Hogg in that 15 position at fullback. So there's the ability here for this team to be relatively uh, attacking. I do believe they've gone for a more defensive setup than they did in the Japan game. There's a lot of players here that are big on their defensive side. Um, I'm not sure how well it's going to be in comparison to that Japan game. I actually think maybe... The team that was announced for Japan might be slightly stronger than this one. Um, but, of course, it's good to get the variety and see who's going to compete for those shirts. Louis Rees Zamet is a very fast player, good in attacking. His defensive work isn't bad, actually, considering um, how he does play. He's very, very aggressive going forward. Stuart Hogg, the counter runner. I think the backs will be very, very aggressive. It's going to be up to the whether the defensive work from the forwards is going to be up to it. Maro Otoje, we know, can give away quite a few penalties. Jamie George has been a bit of a, a stickler for it as well. And even Carl Sinclair, in some of those breakdown areas, can get away. He did play very well in that Japan game, getting out of tackles very quickly. Um, so nice to see Carl Sinclair working on his game, really working on that one. Um, to me, this is going to be a team setup that's going to be based around 
attacking with uh, the back players. So basically, the forwards are going to play defensive. You've got some players in there for turnovers. Your your Itojes, your Anthony, uh, your Hamish Watson, sorry. Um, and basically, the, the idea will be to have an attacking ball when it's in hand, and then using those forwards just to slow down the opposition attack and then create counter ball. Um, we'll quickly talk about the replacements. Luke Cowan Dickey coming in. So so again, England players coming in hard and heavy at this one. Mac over in a polar as well. And Xander Fagerson actually going to be playing this time as opposed to be having a little injury last week. Ian Henderson there coming in the lock. Can play four or five. So we know he'll be doing good work there at some point. Um, Sam Simmons coming in. Someone I'm really looking forward to seeing. Um, no doubt might just do a direct swap for Falatau, maybe 40, 50 minutes into this game. Really looking forward to see him, especially with some tired players. Looks like a speedy player with the ball in hand. Going to be good to see him on the pitch at some point. Gareth Davis on the bench. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's probably a good move. Give Conor Murray a rest, especially if he's going to take over the captaincy roles later on. I think that's a good move. Um, Bundyaki and Daly. Um, so there's a bit of a split here. Is there too many players here? I feel like there's an awful lot of players in that back row. One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight. No, there is eight. <laughs> Just reading those names down there. Felt like there was a few too many going on there. So, Daly, where will Daly come on? Uh, I doubt he'll go on at fullback. I imagine he might even come on maybe for Chris Harris. Um, play that centre channel that Eddie Jones is trying to slowly work him into. And then that way you have, again, the next combo of the Owen Farrell, Elliot Daly combo that you get to have in the England team. Um, I think it's a strong team. There's an awful heavy reliance on some of the England players here. Maybe it's because they just want to give the rest of the players a bit of a rest from last week. Maybe they're hoping that the England players will add a little bit of spice into this uh, this line of team. There's certainly a few areas to work on. And I think the uh, the areas of running, playing the defensive work will be a big one for them. Not being sort of boxed in together and leaving their wingers isolated like we saw in the Japan game um, will be a big move for them. We are into the 56th minute or something now. This game is uh, getting on super quick. So, of course, we need to talk about the opponents the Emirates Lions this is not a team I'm going to be very well educated on at all um, I am going to be talking with the rugby guru at some point and really looking forward to getting his views on this team because there are going to be so many players unfortunately I'm not going to know an awful lot about so hopefully you'll be able to break down a little bit for me so we'll chuck the team on screen for you guys to check out and I'm not going to lie to you guys, it's not the best graphic in the world. It's quite hard to read with some of the red text on black background, so feel free to up some brightness. Um, we'll have a little look through. In all honesty, I had a quick Google of some of the players and stuff because I didn't want to be completely called out on this video. And uh, I'm not going to lie, I have very little to say about any of them, unfortunately. Uh, this is a brand new team for me to try and be learning a little bit about. So uh, we'll have a little run through. So Nathan Macbeth, PJ Botha. Ruan Dreyer, Ruben Schumann, Reinhard Northnagel, maybe, uh, in the locks department there. Um, uh, yeah, it's a real show. I don't know a lot of these players at all. I thought maybe there'd be a couple of the um, the South African internationals or past uh, internationals, which there may be sprinkled in here somewhere. Uh, but there's no names that really jump out. The only one that jumped out to me was PJ Botha, who I don't think is the same Botha who used to play for, for the South African team, if I recall. Um, Rab's Max Wayne rings a bell, and I, I'm not 100% sure why. Um, I had a couple of look at uh, some some YouTube uh, highlights of some of these players, and they are quick, to be fair. They look dangerous. Um, it's going to be a bit of a shame, because I'm going to go into this one blind a little bit. Frank Horn is taking over the captaincy in that number 8 shirt. So we don't get to see a lot of captains at number 8 in uh, Northern Hemisphere rugby. They normally either like to be right up in the middle of the scrum or uh, one of the backs, normally a fly half. So number 8 is quite nice to see. I guess Parise might have been the only sort of divergent one from that in the Italy team, not that that goes on anymore. Um, we'll quickly check out the replacements as well, just in case you guys uh, can tell me a little bit about it. To be honest, this is one of the few videos where I just sort of ask uh, for, for comments on who to keep an eye out and a watch on for, of who's going to actually be able to play well. Um, so, Yako Visagi, Visagi, um, will no doubt come on in that second half. Uh, Stee Sith, Sithol, Sithol, Carlu Sadie, Emmanuel... Chitsuka, um, Ruan Strouli, I, I'm, I'm just going to keep butchering names, I don't know why I've even attempted some of these, uh, Mornay Vanderberg, oh, Mornay Vanderberg, who, oh, has he played before, I don't know, I feel a little bit embarrassed guys, this one is not going to be uh, a great video for me, but there it is on screen for you guys, have a little read through, uh, like I always say in these preview videos, if 
You can uh, drop down in the comments some information if you know a lot more than me and it becomes very apparent by watching a video you know more than me. Feel free to drop it down in the comments on uh, who to watch, who for us all to look out for. Because a lot of us here in the Northern Hemisphere won't have seen a lot of these teams. Obviously, a couple of them are, have been a little bit more involved because of the Rainbow Cup. Um, but for people that haven't been able to catch the Rainbow Cup, haven't been able to pay to actually watch it and so on, um, we won't be fully aware of quite a lot of these teams, quite a lot of these players. I could get on a board with quite a few of the South African international players, but of course they're playing their own tests against Georgia on Friday. Um, so I would imagine most players will have been drawn into uh, that actual international side rather than still playing at club level if there are any that come from this Emirates Lions team. Um, so in terms of score prediction, going in blind on this one for anyone taking part in the uh, fantasy predictor that we've got going on on the channel. This will be the game uh, for you to uh, step up and uh, get ahead of me a little bit, I think, because in all honesty, I'm going to go into this awfully blind as we see uh, Anthony Watson here going for a little nice little run down the wing. Um, who, who do we think is going to win? Um, I think it's a strong British and Irish Lions. I'll have to specify which Lions I'm on about. I think it's a strong British and Irish Lions team. I don't believe it's quite as strong as the one from last week. Um, maybe they were expecting more from an international side as opposed to a club level side. Um, but I still think it's got a lot of possibilities. There's a lot of speed and a lot of attack involved in this international team, or this Lions team, sorry, for the internationals. Um, you know, Stuart Hogg captaining, he's used to that department. Some of the link-ups we have, especially in, in the sort of forward section, Jamie George and Kyle Sinclair play together. Mario Toje, Johnny Hill play together. Uh, you've got your two Welsh wingers working off each other. Stuart Hogg in that fullback position as a captain knows what he's doing. Uh, Owen Farrell and Finn Russell playing in the preferred positions. And Finn Russell, Ali Price doubling up in that halfback position. So I think the Lions have got a strong case here. Um, I did check out the odds and the Emirates Lions are heavy favourites. Um, I'm not particularly sure why they were so heavy. The uh, betting companies have currently got on about 25 points. They believe the Emirates Lions are going to win by which is a lot. So I'm sure this Lions team is going to turn up with uh, some power and some uh, some niche attack. I have no idea how they're going to score quite that many but it's in front of a Lions team. Um, but for me, I, I, I'll go against the grain. I'll go against the betting companies because why not? I'll say it's going to be a Lions win. And my estimate, I'm going to go for a nice conservative 15 points to the British and Irish Lions. That's where I'm going to go down. <laughs> I feel awfully blind in this one. Like I said, guys, I am going to be doing a talk with the rugby guru. He, of course, is South African. He's going to know an awful lot more about me. So when we're going to be doing a chat, uh, that's going to be going on later on tonight. Uh, so that might be on the channel. It'll probably be on the channel after this video. It might be out tomorrow. Uh, it might be out actually on the weekend. But make sure to check out that video because I'm sure I'll be able to talk endlessly about the British and Irish Lions. And I'm sure he'll be able to tell, to tell me everything that's going on with that Emirates Lions team so that we can actually all get to learn a little bit more together. But like I say, if anyone does know any information, who should we be watching out for? Make sure to drop it down in the comments so that we can all uh, keep a little bit of a closer eye on those particular players. We have hit the 80th minute. We're going to take uh, a nice little... Uh, Final kick here. My kicking has been okay so far. Uh, we'll get that over. Good old Dan Bigger getting those conversions over. But I hope you have enjoyed today, guys. I'm sorry that this one has been a little bit uh, lax, probably on my own information being able to give you, uh, because just the knowledge of my own teams, of, of the South African teams, isn't that great. But hopefully, if you did enjoy, make sure to drop this video a like. I will be doing these for all of the Lions videos, along with all of the July internationals that are going on. So make sure to sub subscribe to the channel just to keep up to date with all the videos as they come out. I hope you all enjoyed today, guys. Let's look forward to sitting down and watching some more Lions action on the weekend. It's on Saturday, 5 o'clock UK time. Hope you all enjoyed today, guys. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.